Let's look at an updated Browns roster projection now that we have three preseason games under our belt and going into the final preseason matchup against the Chiefs this weekend. Now, I am feeling a little bit under the weather today, so if I sound a little off, that's why. But let's get right into it. Let's start at the quarterback position where I've got the Browns taking three quarterbacks. No real surprises here. Watson, Dobbs, and DTR. Maybe DTR becomes QB, uh, comes QB2, but all three of these guys are making the roster. No Kellen Mond. Maybe a practice squad spot for him, but I don't even think that. Now, as for the running backs, I think Nick Chubb, Jerome Ford, and I have hopped on the TBD bandwagon because John Kelly and Demetric Felton, they haven't really inspired me all that much in the preseason. The same goes for Hassan Hall. So I wonder if Demetric Felton is the odd man out and the Browns kind of officially close the book on the Demetric Felton era and decide, you know what, let's be Hawks for the waiver wire and let's see if a notable player gets cut. Maybe like, I don't know, Dearness Johnson because he's got some ties to Cleveland, of course. Now he was signed by the Jags this offseason. He has not done all that well in Duval. They love their rookie running back, Tank Bigsby. So maybe they move on from Dearness Johnson to save some money. And the Browns go, all right, why don't we run it back and have another good running back room with Chubb, Ford, and Dearness Johnson. But let me know what your thoughts are. Should the Browns sign a running back? Is this a position where you think they could stand to bring in another player? Or do you like the current makeup of the room and you're like, at the end of the day, Nick Chubb's going to get 300 carries. Who really gives a shit who's RB3 on that roster? Which, you're not wrong, but that's preseason football for you, baby. We get suckered into RB3 debates. Now, moving on to the wide receiver room here. I've got a lot of them. Amari Cooper, Elijah Moore, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Cedric Tillman. Those four are the luckiest locks in all of Lockland, USA. Jakeem Grant, I'm going to have making it. He brings a lot of good special teams value and some speed, which this offense needs. And then I have David Bell and Austin Watkins making it as well. Marquise Goodwin is on the non-football injury list. If he stays on that list through roster cutdown days, he will have to miss the first four games of the season. And I wouldn't be shocked if the Browns go, let's keep Goodwin there. And then after four games, maybe one of those seven guys is injured and Goodwin just takes their spot. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But of course, the big name that everyone is talking about right now is Austin Watkins. Because the guy is a preseason Hall of Famer. I said it. 15 grabs, 245 yards, two touchdowns. For what it's worth... That is more in just three preseason games than David Bell had all of last season. However, I still believe David Bell makes this roster. I don't think Austin Watkins is taking David Bell's spot. He's taking someone else's spot. But I think Andrew Barry ultimately puts both of these guys on the roster. Why? Because it's important to look ahead a little bit as well. And the Browns wide receiver room next year will be different. Amari Cooper's got a $23 million cap hit. What if they move on from him to save some money? And that leaves Cedric Tillman, Elijah Moore, Michael Woods, and Jakeen Grant as the only guys still on the roster. My guess is Andrew Barry does not want to completely have a uh, complete gut and have a new wide receiver room in 2024. So David Bell gets another chance on the roster to prove, hey, I am someone that in my third season can be a big contributor for this team. So pick a wide receiver for me. David Bell or Austin Watkins. Ultimately, I think both make the roster, but Watkins has definitely been better so far. However, David Bell continues to get runs with the first team offense. Something Watkins really isn't getting, and I think that's a good, you know, scope into how Andrew Barry and Kevin Stefanski are viewing these two wide receivers. Moving on to the tight end position here, David Njoku, Jordan Aikens, and Harrison Bryant. I think those are your three tight ends. No Zaire Mitchell Payton, maybe a practice squad spot for him, but ultimately, these are your three guys. As for the, we'll get to the offensive line first and then the defensive line. Uh, as for the offensive line, though, Jedrick Wills, Joel Petonio, Ethan Posick, Wyatt Teller, Jack Conklin, your starting five, of course, all lock. And then I've got Dewan Jones, James Hudson, so two tackles, but I did see and hear Hudson was getting looks at guard. Luke Whipler and Nick Harris, two centers, but I think they could fill in at guard if needed. Ultimately, nine offensive linemen. No Drew Forbes. I went with the nine best offensive linemen, and you do have some overlap. You have two tackles 
and two centers as your backups. But I think those are your nine best offensive linemen. So if Hudson has to fill in that guard, which, let's be honest, Joel Petonio is an Ironman. You can confidently say he's going to play the whole season. Wyatt Teller is mostly an Ironman. We did see him miss some time last year. But I think the Browns want to keep their best nine guys on the field. And maybe that means two centers and someone's got to give a hand at uh, guard if an injury pops up. But I like those nine guys the most. Now, before we get on to the defensive line here, we are closing in on 21.5 thousand subscribers here at the Cleveland Browns Report. 110 subs away. Help us get to our next milestone. And if you have not subscribed, it's completely free. So consider subscribing down below. On to the defensive line now. Miles Garrett, Dalvin Tomlinson, Shelby Harris, and Darius Smith, your four starting defensive linemen. They're all making it along with Okoronkwo, your rookie Siaka Ika, Jordan Elliott, Isaiah McGuire, and I'm going to include Alex Wright. Now, here's the deal with Wright. He is not on IR. If you put him on IR today, he is out for the 2023 season with the Cleveland Browns. My prediction is this. They are going to get Alex Wright through roster cutdowns, Put him on short-term IR after that, which you have to wait till afterwards. And then Maurice Hurst, he signs the next day. I think the Browns are going to bring Maurice Hurst in for a little under-the-table agreement of, we have to cut you today, but tomorrow we're going to put Alex Wright on short-term IR. He got knee surgery two weeks ago, and then we can bring you back onto our 53-man roster. Now, Maurice Hurst is uh, a veteran, meaning he will not hit waivers. He will just be cut. So no one can claim him on waivers. Sorry for the jump cut. I had to blow my nose. All right, getting back on track, though. Linebackers, Anthony Walker, Taki Taki, Jeremiah Usukormoa, all locks to make it. I have Tony Fields making it. And then I've got the UDFA, baby, out of Utah, Muhammadu Diabate. He has just been like the Austin Watkins on the defensive side of the football. He had a safety. He had a forced fumble. He is making plays all over the field. And especially at the linebacker spot where you have two players or three starters all coming off, you know, major injuries, more so Walker and Taki Taki. But even JOK talked about how he was very close to getting foot surgery and all that. So it was not just a bad ankle. So I think bringing on an extra linebacker, I mean, you probably would have gone with six, but I, I think that the three quarterbacks taking someone and then an extra wide receiver, one position group has to be a bit thinner. And I believe uh, Jim Schwartz is going to run a lot of three safety sets. There's just two linebackers on the field. And as a result, you might not need to be six deep. As for the cornerbacks, Denzel Ward, who really quickly, he's been having an awesome training camp so far. I hope for a really big year from number uh, 21. Greg Newsom, Martin Emerson are all making it. Cameron Mitchell, the rookie, makes it. Mike Ford is a is a special teams god. So you know Bubba Ventrone is going to be lobbying hard for Mike Ford to make their roster. And then I've always been a fan of A.J. Green, the better A.J. Green. So those are my six corners making their roster. Moving on to our next position group in just a moment. But today's show was made possible by our sports book partner. Give me 30 seconds to tell you guys why you should go sign up at chatsports.com slash bet. Enter promo code BROWNS125, you get a 125% deposit bonus. Now, you can put some money down on the AFC North odds this year. Cleveland is plus 375, meaning if you bet $100, you're going to win 375. No team has ever won three straight AFC North titles. Rule out the Bengals. The Steelers suck. Rule them out. So already you had a 50% chance between the Ravens and the Browns. I like my odds right there. I like the value at least at plus 375 for a coin flip if history repeats itself. As for the safeties, I believe five safeties end up making this roster. Juan Thornhill, Grant Delpit, Rodney McLeod, and I know you could make the argument of DeAnthony Bell versus Ronnie Hickman for that last spot, but why not both? I, I think that the safety room moving forward is a little bit unclear beyond Juan Thornhill, who's on, under contract for two more seasons. Everyone else is gone after this year, right? I mean, uh, Grant Delpit's a free agent. Ronnie McLeod, one-year contract. So it might not be a bad idea to bring both Bell and Hickman, and that way you have a jump start on replacing Grant Delpit potentially if we lose him in free agency or replacing Rodney McLeod. Plus, Hickman has just made himself uncuttable. Eight tackles, three pass breakups, three interceptions. If the Browns think they can sneak him through the waiver wire and hide him on their practice squad this year, they are going to be mistaken. There will be a team out there that goes, 
There's a safety who had three interceptions in three preseason games. We should probably add him to our roster. He's way better than our fourth safety. And to wrap it up in this special teams room, I am a coward. I, I, I believe it's going to be Cade York. He gun to my head. But I know the A-kicker will make the roster. And I think that's going to be York. But if Cade York struggles in Kansas City and one of the other kicking battles throughout the league results in a very notable kicker like Nick Folk, for example, in New England, getting cut, or Zane Gonzalez in San Francisco, maybe the Browns go, well, we gave York four opportunities, four preseason games. He kicked like 60%. We can't just pass on one of these other good kickers right now. We wanted to stand by him. We wanted to give him our support, give him confidence, not have him get in his own head about his job security. But after the Chiefs game, we can't hold on to him. We have another kicker out there who's a free agent that we like a lot, so let's make the move. That's why I'm kind of a one foot in, one foot out on Cade York. Corey Bajorquez and Charlie Hewlett are your other special teamers to make this roster. But can Cade York redeem himself against the Chiefs this Saturday and preseason week three? Be honest with me. Do you think Cade York is going to put the cape on and go, you know what? Preseason struggles behind me. I've got the best leg in the NFL. That's why the Browns took me in round four of the NFL draft. I can make 55-plus yarders where... Nick Folk is awesome within 50, but the moment you get to 51, Roley, he can't make a single kick beyond 50 yards. So I think that is Cade York's saving grace right there. Some notable omissions that did not make the roster. Anthony Schwartz, this really shouldn't be a, a needle mover. Jalen Darden, Drew Forbes, Michael Dunn, Demetric Felton, and Isaiah Thomas. I all have asterisks next to it. I think those could be practice squad targets. Whereas Schwartz, if he gets cut, there's a 92% chance the Chiefs sign him just because they love speed. Tommy Togiai, I just think the Browns are going to probably move on from him altogether. Jordan Kunashik would be another really good practice squad addition. Matthew Adams, I didn't like cutting, but he has missed some time throughout training camp in preseason. And Diabate has just taken his role. Adams maybe sneaks on because of what he does on special teams, but I like Diabate a lot more. So... That is my 53-man roster projection. I hope to go out of 53, like 48 would be good. I don't know if that's too high or too low, but 48 out of 53, that'd be a pretty good mark. But let's pick a card. Rolly, which card do you want to go with? Yeah, I've been doing some soul searching, man. I got to really get on the train here. And when I do get on that train of finally picking a card right, it will probably be the best day of my life, if I'm <laughs> going to be honest. And I think today might be that day. Mrs. Rowley is going to be so upset because one day down the line. I'm going with a nine of spades. Nine of spades. And I love that pick for the today. I just want it on the record. Nine of spades. Okay. I love the jack of diamonds. What did you say? Nine of diamonds. No, no. Nine of no, diamonds. No, oh, no, we were both so close. No. No, the card no. of the suit. Oh, if we just combined our brains. That will do it for us on today's show. I'm sorry for just sounding like death. Just not feeling very well today. Hopefully I'm better tomorrow. But we will sign off and see you guys later.